Hey Techno Studs, in this video we're going to talk about how Spanning Tree Algorithm uses a root port and elects a root port. The root port is important because it identifies the fastest path that's going to lead to the root bridge. And so once it's identified a root bridge, then it can elect what is going to be the root port that will lead to that root bridge, and then it can later on decide what it's going to do with the other ports that leads to the root bridge. In order to know what is the fastest path to the root bridge, what it's going to have to do is going to have to calculate the cost. And it, it calculates the cost for every path that leads to the root bridge. So let's talk about how it calculates the path cost to the root bridge and how it calculates and figures out what is going to be the root port. And that happens on a per switch. So every switch is going to go through the same process. Okay, the next step now is to calculate the root path cost. And that's the cost of the path to that root bridge. Now, when the bridge protocol data units are sent out, that this switch one will be sending out bridge protocol data units to switch two, and then it will also send it out to switch three, which will in turn send things out to switch two. And this switch will then see that there are actually four paths that can get to that root bridge. So two right here, and then two in this direction. And what it will do for each one of those paths is figure out what is the cost to get to switch one, get to this root bridge. And so it'll calculate all of, the, all of that. And in this, that first glance, we say, oh, well, it looks like it would choose this route right here because it's just directly connected versus this route right here. But that's not necessarily the case. What if this is a 100 meg connection and these are gig connections here? Well, then it would actually prefer to go this way. So how does it calculate that? How does it figure out what is the least cost to get to the root bridge? There are a lot of different standards when it comes to this, and you can even specify your own standard. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter what standard you use as long as it's consistent across your network. You can set these standards on your different switches, but if they're different across your network, that's going to cause problems. But essentially what they do is they assign a certain cost to each one of those links. And it's based off of what the link as it comes into the switch. So if your switch is a 10 gigabit per second port on there, and uh, then in the old standard, it would be set to two, uh, the newer standard 2000. And like I say, there's some other standards on there out there as well. If it's a one gigabit per second, then it's set to four. If it's 100 megabits per second, then it's set to 19. If it's 10 megabits per second, it's 100. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to favor the faster links. It's also going to add things up. So if it has to go across uh, two 10 gigabits per second links, then it's going to be added up to four, and it might prefer that one gigabit per second link. So the, it's going to calculate the cost to the root bridge based off of these numbers, based off of these settings. Let's take a look at an example of this. So here I've got my uh, network here. We're gonna take it once again from the perspective of switch two. And let's say this first link right here is a 10 megabit per second connection. So the cost of it to get to the right bridge here is gonna be 20 million here. So quite high right there. All right, so next, let's say this next link right here is going to be a gigabit per second. So it's going to be 20,000. All right, so we've got that connection right here. Uh, then this link right here, well, let's say that this one's going to be a uh, 20 big, uh, gigabit per second connection as well. So let's say that's 20,000. And then maybe this connection is 100 megabit per second. So this is 200,000. 
All right, for the interest of simplicity, let's say that both of these over here are gigabit connections. So let's say 20,000 for each one of these. So now what's gonna happen is, is the cost of the, to make it out this direction right here is gonna be the link cost of here plus the link cost that's gonna be from this switch to the root bridge, which is 20,000 as well. So in total, this cost right here will be 40,000. And this cost right here will be 220,000 which is the link cost here, plus the link cost that it takes for this switch to get to this bridge right here. So now, out of, for switch two, its options for the cost of each one of these links are 20 million, 20,000, 40,000, and 220,000. So obviously it's going to prefer this 20,000 link over the other links in this network. It wants to figure out what the shortest path is, the least amount of cost to that root bridge. Next, each switch is going to elect a root port. That is the port that it's going to use to forward traffic towards the root bridge. And so what's gonna happen here is the, each one of these switches is going to use this criteria and it's gonna first of all try to select the lowest cost to the root bridge. So here's switch two right here and this is what we said is gonna be the root bridge right there. So that's the root bridge. And Let's, in our last example, we said our lowest cost was this link right here. So it's pretty self-explanatory, wants to use that. And then it would elect that port right there to be the uh, root port, the port that's going to send traffic towards the root bridge. But that's not always gonna be the case where the, that's gonna be the least cost. Let's say these links are the same um, cost to the root bridge. In fact, let's just say that these are the same as well, the same cost. All four links are the same cost to the root bridge. This is very likely because it's going to the same switch and this can actually happen as well where the same, it's the same cost. Well, next what it's gonna do is it's gonna choose the lowest sender bridge ID. So it's gonna take a look at whoever's sending these bridge protocol data units out it's gonna take a look and says, okay, well, who's the lowest bridge ID? In this case right here, it's obviously gonna be the root bridge. And so these, it's gonna be one of these links that it's going to choose and not these links right here. So the lowest sender bridge ID. Now, in this case, we still have two though that we has the same sender bridge ID, the bridge protocol data units that are being sent out are being sent from the same switch, so they have the same sender bridge ID. So in this case right here, then it looks at the lowest sender port ID. So if this is port, uh, let's say on this side it's 045 and this is 046, it's actually going to choose the link that has the lowest sender port ID. And then this one becomes then the root port right there. And then that is now elected to be the root port and not this other one next to it. So that's how that works. It's got three criteria, the lowest to, uh, cost to the root bridge, the lowest sender bridge ID, and the lowest sender port ID. The port ID has a similar type of format to the bridge ID. The port ID is two bytes long. 12 bits are, is the interface number. So if it's FA101 or FA048 or FA, that's whatever that number is that's associated with that. And that's gonna look different depending on the different switches that you have, but essentially the interface number. And once again, it's gonna prefer the lower interface number over a higher interface number. And then the priority here. So maybe we don't want to have it adjust based off of that interface number and we wanna make sure we specify which port it's gonna be selected, then we set the priority on it. But if it's just set to the default, which is 128, then all it will do is it's going to 
then refer to the interface number and be set by whatever interface that it is. So this is the port ID, and once again, it's the sender port, whatever is sending out the bridge protocol data units that it's gonna be determined off of. All right, another time to check your knowledge. Here is the question, what is the root ports? I'm gonna step away in a second here. You can pause the video, try to figure it out, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss what the actual answer is. But this, these should be pretty fun. These, these are like little problems that you get to solve, little logic pro problems that you get to solve. So I, I hope you enjoy this, and, uh, and, and it can be a fun experience. So first of all, though, is you have to know that this is all at, let's say it's 100 megabits per second, all the, the lines. In order to figure out the cost of all these lines, you gotta, figure, you gotta know that, right? Um, and so uh, this is, we'll call this switch one, two, three, and four. So try to figure out what the root port is on each of these switches. Uh, and you're going to be, there's gonna be root ports on only three of the four switches because one of them is gonna be the root bridge. In order to figure out which one the root ports are, we first of all have to figure out what the root bridge is. We take a look at this and we see that all of these are set to the default bridge priority except for this switch one right here, which is for, set to 4096. So this is the winner for the root bridge. This will be the root bridge there. And we all other devices want to send traffic or forward the traffic towards the root bridge. And so what we'll do is then we need to go switch by switch to figure out uh, what is going to be the lowest cost or what is going to be the root ports. So let's take switch two next. Uh, what is the lowest cost? Well, it's not going to be these lines because they are going to add up to more by the time it goes all the way around uh, this direction uh, to uh, switch one. So it's going to be either 045 or 046 that's going, that's going to be elected. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the lowest sender bridge ID. And so the sender bridge ID for this one is this right there. And the sender ID for, well, the, actually both lines and it's gonna come across both lines. So that, that is the one that, that we have. So that is the same. So that's, that's not a tiebreaker, it doesn't work. And then we take a look at the lowest sender port ID. So we see a 045 and a 046. As long as the priorities are the same, we're gonna choose 045. So this port on this side is going to be the port it's going to use. That is going to be the root port. So now we've got the root port for that switch. We can do through the same process for switch three. It's not going to use the ports going this way, so it's gotta be either 47 or 48 that's gonna be sending this way. And we see that, uh, first of all, it checks the lowest cost. Well, we just did that. The next step is the lowest sender bridge ID, which is the same because it's coming from the same switch. And then the lowest sender port, which is 047. So therefore, it's going to choose this port right here as the root port. Now, let's take a look at switch four. Switch four is going to uh, see that there's four ports heading towards this root bridge. What is the lowest cost? And it's gonna say that they're all equal. So these are all equal. Then next what it's gonna do is, well, what is the sender bridge ID? So it sees that the priority for these senders are both the same, 32,768. So then it looks at the MAC addresses and determines switch two. So it will eliminate these two as being options right there. And now we still have two options here we need to narrow down. And now it's going to take it that the lowest sender port ID, which is 043. So this is the one it's going to select 047 is going to be the root port, and that's the one that's going to be elected in that case. So there you go. Uh, that is how it selects the root ports.